another quick tip video by GoEngineer. My name is Bruce Schaller and this quick tip video is on understanding the SOLIDWORKS License Manager client versus the SOLIDWORKS License Manager server. First off, in 2016 they've made this a little bit more easier to understand. So if I go into my All Programs and I look at my SOLIDWORKS group, I've installed the server and the client on my machine. In several instances, we have people that want to do the same thing because somebody in engineering might want to kick somebody off the server that's gone home and still has a license up or something. So in SOLIDWORKS 2016, if we go in and look, they've identified the client and the server separately in the main menu. It's the first year they did that. Prior to 2016, you had to know what was going on between the client and the server from what you picked on. Generally on the client machines, only the client would be installed. On the server, only the server would be installed. But we've got a mix of that going on because some servers are sitting in engineering and they're also a user's machine. So understanding the differences between these two and where they came from is what this short tip video is all about. So if we look and dig into the executable, both the executables are called SWLM Wizard. And you can see here's the other executable down here, both different in size. This is the license manager that is the server license manager. It comes from this directory structure found right here inside of SOLIDWORKS out of the x86 directory because this is still a 32-bit application where the license manager client comes from this directory structure right here. The 2 is because I've got SOLIDWORKS 215 and 216 loaded but you'll find it under the SOLIDWORKS directory under setup under I36. That's where the client is pointing to. Let's look at the differences between them. The server is put on the server for the reason of managing the server. So it has one additional tab in it. If you look at a side-by-side -side comparison, they are both say SOLIDWORKS Network License Manager, but one has five tabs in it and the other has four tabs in it. Obviously the one with five tabs has the server administration tab in it so you get the modify, you can transfer licenses in here if you're to upgrade your license and you need to go in there and modify your license and transfer it this is the way you do it and then you can go in and reinstall your new license and activate it. And on the client end all the users will automatically have the SOLIDWORKS network client installed from the network manager side, but it'll only be the client. They won't be able to kick people off or readjust the license pool or do anything with that. And in some cases, you're going to want users to be able to do that so they don't have to go in to an IT personnel, get a password for the server, which they're usually not allowed to have, and then go do something on the server in the server room or through a remote desktop. So if the capabilities in engineering are that you need that capability, then you need to install the client and the server license on here. And or just go into your SOLIDWORKS group and under your SOLIDWORKS, under this directory right here, you'll find the server that could be used on any of the systems as well. So they both get installed in the SOLIDWORKS installation. You just usually only have one out on the screen with the exception of 2016 now. If you've installed both, you see both right under the SOLIDWORKS tools, client and server. So that's really a breakdown of the SOLIDWORKS network client versus the SOLIDWORKS network client server and there, what the two applications are for, and where you find them. Thanks for watching another quick tip video by GoEngineer.